Well, we got the pump off this motor. Now we need to determine if this motor is any good or not. We need to put the recoil on it so we can crank it over. I found some small metric bolts. I cut down the size, so let's just throw this recoil on. And then I'll crank it over a few times. Looks like there's some water or something in the cylinder. We need to get rid of that. I just dumped some raw gas in there. The recoil's busted, but I just want to see if this thing will fire if I wrap a rope around it. So that's the first sign of getting this engine to see if it runs or not. It does run. It only runs with the choke on, so that's what we have to investigate now. We're going to strip this carb apart. I have another carb to put on for testing purposes. One from the other engine that we took apart, cleaned. But we're going to take this one apart because I suspect the jets and that to be plugged up. And this one too are gummed up. Some sort of crap in there. Uh, the engine seems to run pretty good. Otherwise, I'm pretty happy with that. So this should be a pretty easy project. But we're going to start on that right away. I do have a new carburetor coming in along with a whole bunch of other parts for this engine. So most likely we'll just use the new carburetor. But we're going to take the old one off anyways just to investigate. Well this is where the fun begins. There's nowhere I can really clamp the fuel hose because on the last engine it actually came on top here but not on this one here so I already got the clamp up right there so I got a bowl down below so I'm gonna have to pry it up and I got my clamp right here so I'll get that ready so as soon as we rip it off she's gonna start pissing fuel so we gotta be ready for that well I'm gonna have to pull her off the frame now so we get the carburetor off kinda sucks but it is what it is well, I got both these carburetors side by side. Doesn't seem to be any difference between the 120 and the 160 engine. Uh, maybe a different jet size inside or pilot, whatever. But we're just gonna throw this one on for right now and fire it up, see what happens. I wanted to show you guys this because the problem might not always be a carburetor issue. So I just want to check to see if the float bowl was getting fuel. And the fuel's on on the side, as you can see. And I drained it, but what I figured out is if I remove the fuel cap, I'm going to remove the fuel cap. Whoops. I'll try to keep that in there. If I remove the fuel cap, see how it's just pouring in now? And if I put the fuel cap back on, She's going to trickle down and come to a stop. Unless it's going to call me a liar. There it is. It's slowing down now. So our problem might be with that fuel cap too. So that's something else we're going to have to look out. But I'm going to put the plug back in it for right now. And finish doing everything else. I just cleaned this cap and I also noticed that those two little holes were plugged up. Well let's see if we get this thing to start and have it run on its own. Oh that's a good start right there. So this nozzle tube wasn't plugged up, this pilot or jet is clear as well, the float works fine, the engine only runs when the choke's on. Now did anybody pick up what was wrong when I stuck the other carburetor on from the GX120 when this is a GX160? Even though the carburetors are the same size, however with the larger engine, the 
mixture screws are going to be different. As you can see right there, you can see the GX160 external is three turns out, two and one eight turns out, however. But the only reason why it could have possibly ran with the choke on with this one because it's not getting enough fuel, so it's running lean, so it needs to have the choke on to run. Now with this one here, I just verified that there's nothing wrong with the carburetor being dirty or filthy inside. So why was it running with the choke on only? Remember, there's a few things. We got bad gas, which could be one. That fuel tank cap was plugged, as, you sh as I showed you before. When I opened it up, it wouldn't allow fuel to pour down. So we got some other things to figure out. Is it something eternal, or is it just fuel related? I'm going to end the video here. You guys post your questions below what you guys think. And we're going to get to that in the next couple of videos or so, depending on how long it takes, because we're going to do quite a bit to this engine. Anyways, if you have any questions or comments, post them below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.